let's start with the oracle like what is oracle oracle database is a relational database management system which is rdms from the oracle so oracle is a ps sql language which is developed by the oracle itself and uh, this uh, like uh, explains a complete overview of oracle database features and additions before starting the session let's you know about the database first database refers to the organization collection of structured data stored electronic in a device it allows us to access manage and find relevant information frequently the flat file structure was extensively used to store data before the database system was invented the relational database approaches becomes popular in comparison to the flat file system model because it eliminates redundant data for example suppose you have a employee and con uh, and contact information stored in the same file in that such cases the employees with multiple contacts will show up in many rows. The RDBMS system manages the relationship database. The Oracle database is the most famous relationship database management system because it shares largest part of market among other relational databases. Some of the other popular relation, relational databases are MySQL DB2, SQL Server, PostgreSQL. In fact, MySQL is also Oracle product nowadays. DB2 is from IBM. SQL Server is from Microsoft. PostgreSQL is an open source system. Uh, let's understand that what is relationship management. So I think I'm pretty. You might be pretty much aware that what is relationship management, RDBS product, and what is non RDBS products. So this is RDBS product. That is Oracle relationship management, and there are other non RDBS products. which can be like Mongo, DB, yes, yes, I've done, DB, yeah, so the difference between both of these databases is that this database so you can define the uniqueness of the database suppose you want to uh you want to deal with the banking applications and in that game there might be some of the properties which might be unique and every time somebody enters data you will force a force coming restriction that you have to enter this number otherwise your data won't be accepted because you know this that the important that every data which is entered is important so you don't want to lose any data so it is based on asset properties asset asset stand for at uh, automaticity consistency isolation durability we will understand what are these things okay? asset properties mean all the data on the database are really important so mongodb cassandra are the databases which is used for web based application like twitter instagram they use this kind of databases where there is no restrictions you can enter character number anything anywhere over here you can define when you write a table you can define whether you want to use only character where care numbers you can define what kind of uh inputs you need for a column and the thing is that this database is quite more have more kind of dependencies uh, like the primary key foreign key unique key you define and that on the basis of that one you can create an indexes and everything The following is a list of Oracle database addition in order to priority and database addition. It is the most robust and secure addition. It offers all features, including superior performing and security. So enterprise addition is the most used. It is used in a production a production for the applications. And it have all got all the features like the uh, RM backup, um, DR setup, and the cloning part and everything is available on this one. So the licensing cost of this database is always higher. Now, if you just need a database, which uh, which there are some of the features which is not available uh, in the standard editions, like the RMN is not available and performance tuning is kind of things which is uh, not available in this database. You cannot perform tune, you cannot do any of the databases. Express edition. It is a lighter version of the database. It is a uh, freeware limited with the Windows and anything. So most of the company they use for development or any kind of testing this database. 
personal database it's it's this is a normal database which have very less features compared to other features so probably when install databases all your mush all databases install comes with there but you can't use some of the feature which is restricted by the oracle if you use this feature which is restricted by the user in this enterprise editions in these other editions you have to pay some licensing cost so probably many of the company for production they use enterprise editions and for the uh, other like development testing uat they prefer using standard edition or the expert editions so Oracle was started in 1984, first databases. So this is the history of the databases. And the, the most popular database Oracle was initial 11G. So 11G have release one, release two. And then we have Oracle 12C, which is a multi-tenant databases. Let's understand what is multi-tenant. Now, the problem is over here is that for every database, I need specifically database. So I specifically I need RAM, CPU. So if I want to put all these three databases on one server, that means I have to add all this RAM together. Sixty four into sixty four plus sixty four plus sixty four, CPUs four plus four plus four. Okay, because the memory this needs because this will have its own background processes. This will have its own background processes. This will have its own background processes. But this was kind of overhead that every time there was some uh, issue, like you have one database running, suppose there is some load, there, there might be load increased on the server, which might impact other databases. There is a most much load available on this one. It's just might impact on other data performances. So to in order to deal with situation, Oracle came with a new concept of multi-tenant database. Multi-tenancy database. So now what I will do, this is called CDP based kernel, PDP and CDP based kernel databases. Now this is my container. This is will be my container. Now every database will have independently their own background process, which is responsible for keeping this database up and running and processing. It's a database engine with their own. But over here, with the help of multi tenant architecture, database will have only one single background processes. Now earlier they you earlier they used to have their own background process, but now all the background process will be shared among that because this container itself is a database. And this database are plug-in databases, plug-in, plug-out, plug-in, plug-out. So this is called container and this is called PDPs, portable databases. PDPs. So this is called PDPs. Now in future, if you want to add some more databases, you can directly plug in, you can create more databases and plug in, plug in into this one. So there is always a room for your databases. You can add one more if you want in future. But over here, if you want to shut down or you want to drop any databases, this one, so in case you can log into your container, switch to the session and switch it off. So there is a probably given call. Log into the container database. Container equals to a name of your PDP, uh, UAT, DB. Now you switch to this database. Now you can perform all your actions and everything. Okay. And if you want to switch back to this one, you can instead of exit, put the exit and switch to databases. So this is called the multi tenant database. Now the advantage of this database over this is that earlier all this background process, you need some memory, CPU, RAM, storage, and everything. Now, instead of having their own background processing and sharing memory with the cpu and everything now they all will share all this background process together and they will use a single whatever like the whatever the memory you have given okay so now if the load have increased for this one that automatically this will be balanced by other this one earlier we used to give ram because we, apart from the uh, ram everything we have we there are kind of sga pga adjacent system global area which have defined for specific databases mm -hmm. now we have to 
specify for the entire container. See the, so if this have uh, almost like uh, 128 GB of RAM, which will be shared among three. If you add one more database, it will be shared among four. Earlier, they do not use to share their memories like the CPU, RAM, anything. But now it will be shared with the help of PDP and CDP concepts. So PDP CDP concept was introduced in 12C database. Multi Oracle multi tree databases. Oracle has another main difference which is with version 12 at 20. It has already equaled in the market and have most important lesson for this announcement. Now the concept of Gcrit in 11G, 10G, 11G has been replaced by the C Cloud. Oracle top features as follows Oracle multi tenant passing online data files move table reach to from full backup invisible column autonomic automatic data optimization flex asm data masking multiplex index for same column so this is the background process this is the architecture database this is the architecture of our databases so these are the background process pmon smon greco mmm mnl others so these are the mandatory background processes. If any of the process is killed or is down, that means it's going to affect your database entirely. Now we'll understand one by one what are the things. Data files, data files. Let's understand what is data files. Data file. Data file is something which is stored on the memory. Memory is over here. It's something on the OS level side. Control file. Control file is again a data. It's again a physical thing which is available. We can see that on the OS side. Background process again we can see on the OS side. It is all. Uh, it is again can be seen. Table something which cannot see that is logical. Table space again something which we cannot see on the OS is logical. Even database objects are logical. So anything which is which we can see on the machine. Example, now I can say something, this file. This file is physical, it's not logical. So anything which we can see, table is something which we, we cannot see. If you want to see a table, you have to log in a database and select stuff from the table. Then that goes to data file, which is available on the memory, on the hard disk, and will pull the data. There are different between, uh, there, there's a different between logical and physical databases. Now again, we'll understand how database is stored in, the, in, in your database engines. First, there's a user. This is my database. This is my hard disk. And this is the user using some kind of applications. Now, this user have written command called ten. That means that's the limit for the number. Lum number it shouldn't be more than a ten or less than ten. Name, which is fair cat two will go to database. It will first check whether the statement is valid or not. Statement is valid like whatever, like create table employee. So it will check already that is a employee table or not. Then it will check the EMP number, uh, all this thing, uh, the characters, everything given is correct or not. Okay. Now, if it passed, it will go to that to go to the hard disk or the storage part. There will be table space. Table space, which is a logical one. Under the table space, there will be one data file. How data file looks like. It looks like you know, u01 slash system slash uh, user slash users 01 dot dbf dbf means database file this is how your data file looks like under that it will create one table so you can see that data file is, is something which is we can see on the OS. Here you can see u01 slash system slash user 01 dot dbf. 
So all your database objects like the table, index, views, materialized views, functions, trigger, uh, all this from every procedure functions, all this remains in .dbf file. And this file are a binary file, which is not we human cannot understand this file. So this for completely complete binary files are there. Okay. So in order to see any kind of contents on this file, you have to go with the help of database. You have to connect to database, select stuff from now. This database is stored. Now this have got the table EMP stored over here. EMP table saved. Now if I want to see, uh, like example, now this person have created a table. There is one more person who have entered some records in the table, like insert into EMP and ten dot room dot. Now, this person have rec entered the record. Now, this will again go to this database engine, perform the check whether the statement is correct or not. If the statement is correct, then it will insert the t insert the records in the EMP table of this under the data under the data file on the OS. Now, this person. want to see the records from EMP table. How you, this person can see the table? How can how can see the records from the table? Can he directly go to this uh, machine and see this records like the VI from the other side? And if any idea like how we can, this person can, can see, can he just directly go to the OS uh, to go to the uh, memory and check the content from this file? No idea. Maybe I don't know whether in, in Unix, if you do VI, whether we'll be able to see, I see it. Okay. Any Lakshmi, any idea of how this person can see the record from this table? You can do if select you know. star. Logically, you can do select star, but otherwise, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So the thing is that everything the database has, they are binary files. So any binary files database has, we can never ever understand. It's kind of a whenever you open a uh, file which is a binary file, you will it will not show any data. It 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 will look like some kind of junk characters to you. Okay. So, so everything a binary file can be accessed with the help of database engine only. Okay. So this person have to run a query. The query goes to service engine over here. This is the I have shown this already. Okay. Can you see this one? Select stuff from SQL area. So your query goes to database engine over here. It goes to the library cache shared pool area. It's first perform the check whether the all the character which you have entered is, is valid or not. Then it will go to database files. Can you see this 0101 the binary files over here? This is the database. This is data files. Okay. Now it will go to the operating system, operating system, check whether table exists or not. Then it will read the format, go back to your database engine, convert in a readable format for you because it you in readable format for you, and then it will display the result. So database engine is something which is for storing in a binary format. Now this is undable. You can understand this language, create table. Okay. Now this got converted into binary 0101 language and got saved on a file which was on the operating system or on the database hard disk. Now after that, somebody have executed select star from select star from EMP. Now this goes to the engine again. Now this engine goes to the uh, goes to the file where on the OS side, fetch the answer fetch the result, convert in a readable format and will show you the result on your machine. Might be SQL developer on the, or any, any command prompt anywhere. Okay. 
Now this is how the result works. Okay. So all this background process on the database side are actually responsive for something or not. Free buffer cache. Okay. Now you have got the answer select star from EMP. Now again you have executed same command or like example that one more person he came and he have also executed the same thing. Yeah, but uh, do you think it's going to go back to the database uh, on the uh, going to go back to the database on the uh, storage, find the answer and come back? Exactly, exactly. Because last time, the same query now, where after executing the same query, Oracle engine assigns it a unique number. Okay, hash number. Okay, this hash number is assigned for this query. And if now earlier my question was select star from EMP. Now my if this person have entered EMP, what you will do? That's right. Because the, there's a change in the query. So you might have heard in uh, in a, like the in a company, they always say that you either use all in upper letter or in the small letters, but mm -hmm. never differentiate because every time it confuses your database engine, this is the it it is going to consider this a new query. If you would EMP, it will go directly to library cache uh, and it already have a hash key assigned to it, hash key. With the help of hash key, it will give you the result from the library cache instead of going back to the operating system, perform the IO, taking the result, coming back, converting a readable format and showing the result. So this involves a lot of time and IO. Just example, this is a select start for EMP, but in your bigger organization, there might be millions of records in a table. So probably it has to do number of IO, which again, uh, takes a number, number of CPU, RAM and everything. So this is called now this word, which, uh, it is called, if you take any result from the, uh, now, if you are taking any kind of, uh, you're fetching any result or any table or any record from the hard disk that is called hard parsing hard parsing okay any result now this is my example this is my the library cache cache any result which is coming from the library cache is called soft parsing Soft passing because it doesn't have to go to the operating system and bring the data. It have directly bring from the from the library cache. So this is how the uh, cache of the, this is how the data engine works over here, shared pool area, shared SQL area. Okay. So every statement is giving some kind of unique hash key number. So probably if again you will do this hash uh, search of IMP directly it will show give data from the library cache which won't take much of time and there will won't be any kind of io involved over here but as soon as you change the character of the uh, from upper case to lower case lower case upper case immediately it a new hash key is generated for that one and again it will go to the uh, with the help of io this is opening system this is storage one okay see many companies they might differentiate these things so this might be uh, os it resides on different one uh, OS. Okay. Now this is my hard disk. In order to be on a safer side to for the database corruption, database loss, they put this on a different server. And this storage is mounted with the help mounted with NAS or SAN storage. So every time you select star anything, it has to perform number of action in the background with the help of with the help of network bandwidth. It will go to the storage part, fetch the query, get the result, convert it in your form, and then give you the results. This was the library cache. Now we'll understand what are the online files, archive files, flashback files, control files. So control file, let's understand control files. What is control file? It's again, very important thing for database. Control file is again a binary file. Any binary file is something which we cannot understand. So we cannot understand anything what is written in a binary. 
कंट्रोल फाइल फर्स्ट इट इज अ बाइनरी फाइल सेकेंड इट स्टोर्स इंफॉर्मेशन about database like scn number data by location data by location database unique name third it marks what the mark to data files after commit duration it keep consists stands of data now my this is the content of our data file uh, this is the data file okay now the control file so whenever user perform the update query or anything like update table update table emp now this emp table is stored in might be any any you can go to any uh, like might be any data file or any data file might be system or user anyone now there might there should be some kind of thing which should mark that yes this table has been updated to whether system or user so that role is <clears throat> done by the tablet and it is marking control file <clears throat> so control file is something like the it have all the information of database every, the timing the database consistency so every time just example this database is marked data file is marked i'm giving you example one three seven six okay one seven eight four now now suddenly your database get crash it got crash your database got crash now <clears throat> with the help of backup you already have a backup so you restored the database database is restored but who's gonna carry who's gonna confirm the consistency of the database so next time when the database is stored when you're about to start a database this control file have a uh, information that the data files last sequence number was 13734 so either it should be 13734 or uh, or else it won't allow you to start a database because it had marked watermark is given to data files because now after this update command it have marked 13734 by marking that the database was last updated but this is this is this sequence number next time if you reach to database it should make you have to make sure that your database is coming with this number 13734 so 13734 is something which is coming on the basis of the record updations so unless unless this 13734 is not recorded it won't allow you to start the database it will show inconsistency data that kind of error it will show you so control file is a uh, heart of database because it have all the numbers involved. It will, it have everything given information like the data file location, where it was located, database SCN number, timing, database unique number, 
and uh, how many uh, redo log file, log file, undo table space, all every data file which your database is working on have all this record in your control file. So control file is a binary file. So, but if again, you can convert, convert this control file into readable format. Now to convert, you can convert this control file into, into uh, in, in a readable format. So even sometime when you duplicate database or when uh, we want to uh, restore database, we use control file because control file have all the information. So in that case, we do uh, convert a control file into a text format and then we can read what exactly is written in this control file. So uh, moving ahead in the practical session, we will uh, convert this, we will check what how to convert this in text file and what are the things in this control file. Uh, there are three files, which is uh, actually mark having all the information database. That is first is control file. Okay. Control file, uh, SP file, P file. Okay, so control file is a binary format, binary okay. format. And SP file again is a binary format. P file is a normal file. It's a, you can see this one with a, it's a, it's a readable format. Okay, so all these three file combination is a con or uh, all three are control files, is it? No, no, this control, it's only control. P file is a P file, and SP file uh, have are a file with the help of which database starts. Okay. Okay. So that once like you have given a RAM, LG memory defined over here. Okay. So mm -hmm. now your memory, whatever you have spy, specified in the SP file, it's going to keep it. It's, it's like running with the hello SP file. Now, if you want to change anything, like you have to increase the P file and increase the memory for mm -hmm. your database or anything, you will perform on the SP file and restart it. Control file is a run runtime important runtime. Once your database starts, okay. it's gonna take the control file. Like what is the location of data file? So location of data file is something which is stored in the control file. Okay. Database SA number is marked in a control file. So SP file in SP file, you should have the location of control file. Okay. So this two file, binary file, SP file, they are like the same file, but it's a binary, it's a readable format. So okay. you can start your database with the help of P file also. You can start your database with the help of SP file also. So, but control file is something which is which you can never ever change, make that changes to the control file. You can't change directly. But if you want to change something SP file, what you will do first, you will create a P file from SP file, make changes in P file, and then start, and then again create a SP file from P file and start databases. So database can be started with the help of a P file. They are a memory initialization parameters. Memory initialization, database initialization parameters. Okay. So like the name of the database, version compatibility, where, what is the location of a control file. So it, it will read control files location from the SP file or P file. And in control file, the actual location data file, location data files and the, uh, and the redo log file, and the SCN number, all this information are control file. Control file is something which doesn't have data. It have the locations, information, not the data. Correct. So here, here you can, no, we can't start. Here you can see that the yeah, data file was located, but the, 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 the SCN mark number was not up to date. It didn't okay. allow us to start database. Okay. okay. So control file is very important because every second, every fraction second, it goes update the control file with different different kind of number SCN number SCN number is like as soon as your database expands it keeps on up updating like one to two to record somebody's recording updating command somebody's updating some dml dml is going on so SCN number is keep on running in like in a in a in a front like plus one plus one plus one plus one okay so okay. it has to mark on the control file side so if your control file is lost you can't start your database Either okay. you will control, you will start a, uh, if, either if you have a backup of a control file. So many companies, control file, P file, SP file, they take backup of this file on a daily basis along with your database, database complete database. Okay. If your control file is lo lost, you can't start here because you don't know where, where is the location of data file. Mm -hmm. The location of data file is in control file. 
if the control file is not there, how your database will understand where the database is there? What is the database name? What is the user DB file? What is the SCN number? It have no information. So let's la last topic and then we'll end up the session. How database starts. Oh, down, shut down. Okay, let's understand. Let's understand the shutdown options. Shut me. Yes. Shut abort. Shut. Now, shut image it. When you hit the call button, shut image it. I'm examining example how the database is stopped. When you hit a shut image it, and at the same time, there was a transaction. Transaction was going on, and it was update table EMP. Now, he was updating 500 records. And after 250 record, record was updated, somebody, someone shut, somebody exit, somebody stopped database. In this case, what it will do, it will immediately roll back the 22. It will stop that transaction immediately. It will roll back 250 record, which was updated. And, and it won't allow any new connections to connect to database. All the current connection database will be stopped and immediately shut your database will be rolled back. It's going to perform a rollback. Okay, roll back all the transaction. Make sure that database is consistent. If you remove, if you up, uh, roll back all 50 records, your database will be consistent because either it's going to wait for 250 transaction, remain uh, 250 transaction to be updated, or else it will uh, roll back 250 records and it will shut down the database, killing all the connected session and not allowing any new connections. That's what happened in when you can hit a shut image. It now. What is shut abort? Shut abort is the most dangerous form of stopping database command. Okay. Never ever do this shut abort in database. It's now, as I said, that was transaction going on. Somebody was recording tables, everything, updating the record. Record. When you hit shut abort, it won't give time for this transaction to roll back to 50 records. Immediately, everything will be killed. Immediately. No rollback, nothing. So this might lead to database corruption sometime. Sometimes it may result in database corruption. Database corruption because it doesn't allow you to roll back the transaction. But one more thing. Next time when you start database, start immediate. Immediate. Next time it will go check what was the last command executed. Shut abort. This time while starting a database, it will perform the recovery, but not after, during the uh, shutting down. Initially, with the help of shut immediate, first it used to uh, undo the command, roll back the command, and then stop database, putting database in a consistency man consistent manner, and then stopping database. Over here, in with the help of shut abort, it will immediately kill all the sessions. The transaction which was earlier was going on. Now it will wait for those transaction to uh, either to for the transaction to roll back or perform the query. If 
those transactions are not able to perform any kind of operations like a rollback or anything, your database will result in database corruption for some of the database objects. So shut Im abort is a very dangerous command. Shut immediate sometimes takes quite a long time because it's going to wait for all the transactions to roll back, perform the uh, perform the rollback of transactions, database consistency is recorded, all the header file, header file entries are marked in the control files. Now, once the database is, consist once the database is consistent, then only it will stop the database. And after stopping the database, insert image command. When you start database, it won't take much of time because your database was already consistent because it had wait for the transaction to roll back and update their records in the control file. And now there won't be any kind of recovery. So it won't take much of time. But in case of shut about command, all the transactions which were already going on in process, they will be killed immediately without waiting for them to roll back the transactions. So their transaction, their rollback will be is going to happen only and only when we'll start the database next time. So next time when you start the database after shut about, it's going to ask all the pending transaction, all the failed transaction, all the transaction which was killed earlier to roll back. If any of the moment they are not able to roll back, that's going to lead to database corruption. So in database, in as a DBA, your job is to make sure database never ever is encountered with any kind of corruption because that table or objects might be very very important to the company so you have to make sure that you never use database shut about command unless unless you don't need database sometimes you are working on database which needs to refresh right now so in that case you don't need this data so you can use shut about command but in case of normal databases never use shut about command so the command for restarting database is same. So oh, image okay. start start is like start image. Okay. So once mm -hmm. your database is down, this command is same. Mm -hmm. But in whenever you hit a start image after shared abort, it will go check the consistency of database. In the last shared abort, database are not consistent because it didn't allow any transaction to mark watermark to the control files header file, data file. Mm -hmm. So it will go and check in the control file. Definitely example. Now you uh, will understand tomorrow how the acid property of database works. So you can understand that uh, it, it is going to understand that thing because a header file is one, three, eight, seven, four hundred file. Other, uh, other is one, five, six. It will come, it will automatically comes to know because database is very, very smart to understand that last shutdown was abnormal. So it's going to wait for all the transaction to roll back. If not, then it database corruption will be lead. It's going to lead. Okay. Okay. So there are a different background process, which is responsible for recovering these transactions. Let's go S1 and P1. Tomorrow we will understand the background processes and what they do in the background for, or for the databases. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is just imagine that now you have a uh, roll back the transaction and uh, undo is there, but somehow when you shut image, shut abort, it immediately kills. It doesn't wait for a fraction of a second also. In a nanosecond, it's going to kill all the sessions. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it, it may be like, like because it's a database. So mm -hmm. all example now, 250 records got updated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now 251, 254 was going on. Mm -hmm. But the, the undo was till 250. What of the four good. records? It was about to mark its presence in the undo table spread, but at that point of time, you kill the sessions. So okay. four records are gone. Okay. Okay. So because it's not going to wait in case of shut image, it's going to wait. It's going to wait for the 250 records to roll back. Once no. those transitions are rolled back, then only it's going to give the green signal for the database to shut down. It's okay. going to go to control file. Control file will go to the data file. Mark the watermark with the SCA number. Yes, the database is consistent. Now it's good to stop the database. But in case of abort, it is not going to wait for any, like all the session will be killed immediately with immediate effect. It like if you enter shut abort, you mean to say like this operation are performed by only DBA. So in order to perform this operations, you need to have access to your database. You are the DBA. So probably you might understand that the person who have done the first operation. Example, now you, we both are connected. You start, you, uh, you went to a database, you started the start image. But before that, I have done shut about. Now your start image is going to wait for my database to go down. Unless, unless the database is not down, it won't allow you to take this control. 
is will first come first serve. Unless unless your database is not coming bad, starting a midget, but the thing is it will not allow you because so when you start database listener is something which is address. So your database is example. I'm giving a database so example. How the user user applicant is connected to database. They are not connected to database directly. They mm -hmm. are connected to database with the help of this file called listener. Mm -hmm. Listener, this listener, this listener have what? Give me example. What this this listener have? This have uh TNS name. TNS it is called first port of database on which is running. Post name, SID. Okay, this is the important. This is the details you have to give to the application of the user. And if this listener is down, you can't connect to database even though connect database up and running. So when you shut a bot, even this also goes down. Okay. So there is no provision that anyone will be able to connect database. So even if you start database, you have to start listener also manually. So this is the address. Your database address is overstored in the listener file. All the users, they might get details of the uh, username, password, plus port number, host name, SID. So let me show you how actually this looks like. See, host name, port number, SID, service name, along with the username, password. So when you give this details, it will go to this host IP address and it's going to go and check the port number and the service name. This is the name of the database. So if here I said, even though the database is up and running, unless unless this listener file is not up, you can't connect to databases. So after starting the database, you have to start this listener also manually. And once the listener is up and running, it will go to database and check. Well, now, once the database is up and running, it, it is open to allow new connections. When you click shut about, that means database is not up. It just will give an error like this one. Now database, there's nothing connection. Test. It won't allow. It's gonna give an error. Testing connection. Now it's going to the server. My VPN is not connected. That definitely it's it can't perform any kind of testing. It can't go and test connection because this host it will not be reachable. The same thing is gonna happen when your database is down. Okay. Then Lakshmi, Lakshmi, any questions? Like, did you go this uh, the answer right for your questions? Mm -hmm.